soldier's story. As I ran upon the ground, knowing not where I was bound, with bayonets fixed and spirits high, charging men fall and die. Sudden burst from a machine gun nest, and I fell among the rest. Mom, Dad, I begin to yell as I felt the heat of hell. Over fallen bodies I begin to crawl, through oozing blood draining from all. As I looked up, I saw a man standing firm with a gun in hand. I felt the blade tear into my chest. Now I lie among the rest. Amen. Fifteen point two percent of all male Vietnam veterans and eight point one percent of all female Vietnam veterans are currently diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. One in six Iraqi veterans have PTSD. On average, thirty percent of these veterans seek professional help. Come with us as we explore PTSD by looking at how three Vietnam veterans have coped with this affliction and how they have used art to help relieve the destructive symptoms that have devastated their lives. Roger Osborne is a band leader and a fiddle player who credits music with saving his life. The songs that I play, I choose They've got, to, they've got to stick with me or something, you know. You get down the fiddle and you get down the ball, you know. And, uh, you know and you enjoy it. Because it soothes your mind. That's what you're after. So when I came back, there was no one to unload on. Except for the poetry that I was able to express. And I would take time, I'd go out to the woods, or I'd go to a coffee shop, or I'd go someplace, and I would sit down and I would write. Computer graphics is just so immediate. You know, if I'm excited, depressed, upset, really turned on about something, I can express it within a half hour to an hour. I can have a, an image that will express that because I can um, take bits and pieces of a lot of different images and create a whole new one. Uh, PTSD, or post-traumatic stress, is a um, collection of symptoms that is precipitated by some uh, traumatic event. The mortars were right on top of our area. The guy next to me got hit. Another guy not too far away took a, real, a direct hit. But when that, I mean, the, the mortars, the explosions were getting louder, the flashes of light were getting brighter, and then there was a brilliant white flash and no sound. And I was unconscious. I thought I was dead. A person with PTSD will try to structure their life in a way in which they try to reduce uh, the feeling of threat. Um, and so they're going to um, kind of stay away from, especially crowded places, public places, where um, there's so much going on that the person can't pay attention to it all. But because of some of the emotional numbing that they've uh, learned to do in order to keep their fear under control, they're going to appear more distant in their relationships with other people. I think once you begin to mistrust those that you used to trust to the max with your, with your life, uh, you change your feeling. Everything's to be feared, everything's to be mistrusted, everything, everything, including yourself. So who do you trust? Who, do you, who can you talk to? You, know, you couldn't talk to anybody. 
it's that lack of control in your life that you had for a year in Vietnam. When you come back, you, you kind of go through this period where you want to control the outcome of things. And one of the first casualties of this control thing is trying to control your emotions because you don't want to get angry. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to show that emotion at all. That kind of scared me. A good 40% of people that are affected with post-traumatic stress will have that as a chronic condition the rest of their lives. Most of us know of war from TV or the movies, but in truth, it's almost unimaginable. Some veterans have successfully dealt with re-entry into society, while others have trouble adjusting in many areas of their lives. Some of the first people to deal with a veteran upon their return are those closest to them, their families, and recognizing the symptoms may not be easy for them. And, and that I'm not going to trust this person up front. And so it's going to take some portion of time, a month, two months, for me to even feel like I can trust this person if I have PTSD. And so I think part of the challenge for families is to kind of uh, extend your arm a little bit with here's what we would like to see you do and then back off if they're not ready. I mean, you know, when you reach a point where so your significant other says, hey, I'm leaving if you don't go get some help. Uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of pretty direct, which I guess I needed. A similar trait in those affected with PTSD is their inability to maintain employment. I've had like 30 years of being fired from jobs. Yeah, employment problems often accompany PTSD. Um, sometimes there are problems with authority figures. I tried real hard when I got back. I went to school. I, had, I never could finish that. I got a job. I didn't last two years. I suspect that's the longest I've ever worked. I'd be... Uh, on edge. A lot of times, my way of an, of, uh, of answering a question that was was uh, through violence. Some of the other things that typically family members and employers will notice with somebody who has post traumatic stress is their inability to focus their attention at work. Um, oftentimes, their inability to carry through with a task that they started on. And they may be very irritable and not get along with fellow employees and may not respond well to uh, direction from their boss or manager. But then, you know, after a while you get fired from enough times and you begin, well, it must be something. Problems with families, work, and functioning back in society sometimes lead veterans to start the road to recovery. What we do here uh, in our PTSD program at the VA Medical Center in Battle Creek is uh, first we will do an assessment. We will sit down and meet with a veteran, ask them questions about how they're doing, what their problems are, uh, some of their life experiences. We will also ask about their um, trauma experience. In the outpatient setting they also have group settings where they can come in and talk with other veterans who have the same experiences have been living through the, probably the same uh, difficulties. Then we have an inpatient program. The inpatient program deals with a holistic outlook of mind, body, spirit. They get to see a treatment team. Uh, again, they're gonna have classes. They're gonna have group settings with other veterans. It's gonna be extremely helpful for them. And so we really work with people to increase their socialization, improve their communications, learn to uh, reduce their anger. The records are very well protected. Uh, we have confidentiality laws that are very similar to what attorneys have with their clientele. And so uh, without a subpoena and the permission of the person with the PTSD, my records are not available to anyone. I would have never come to a government facility. I would have stayed in the woods and I would have kept drinking and doing my smoke. But another Vietnam veteran who was uh, comes to the hospital, Ron Gidrichy, he uh, he talked me into it. He 
talk me into coming up here. The ideas that you have, I guess, of coming home from war was based on Hollywood movies, I suppose. You know, you come home, the band's playing, and you're a hero and all that kind of stuff. Didn't happen. Come home, we were, um, you know, called all kinds of names, people spitting at you, giving you the finger. There's no medal they can give you that can erase from your mind the fact that you took another human's life. And if you've grown up in an environment of love or just with the basic concept of the Ten Commandments, you know that there's something wrong with that. One day you're in Vietnam with a gun. Next day you're when well, next day you're in getting off in uh, Seattle or, or someplace in the states, you know. And uh, I remember getting off that plane and some brand new second lieutenant says, "Get that hat on, soldier." <laughs> We had survived a year in hell, and now we were safe at home. We were quickly processed through customs, then loaded onto buses that were headed for the municipal airport. As our bus went by, even above the roar of the motor, we could hear the shouts of the anti war activists. Baby killers! Baby killers! Baby killers! Baby killers. In his book, A Spiritual Warrior's Journey, W.H. McDonald Jr. paints a powerful word picture of my emotional state when I returned from Vietnam. I was left spiritually wounded and emotionally bleeding. I felt more alone than I'd ever been in my entire life. I couldn't even shed a tear. I was dry inside. All of my emotions were dead. I was without outward expression. I had lost a part of my soul, and I wondered if I could ever find it again. I you know, have been working in therapy out here for, I think, since 1980. I still have a very reclusive lifestyle, but I can function in society. I can go shopping with my wife, even though it's not my favorite activity. Uh, we can go out to dinner and enjoy a, a dinner out. There was a time in my life when I wouldn't go to a restaurant, wouldn't go shopping, wouldn't I? I lived very much in isolation. Whether it's drawing pictures or writing poems or making music or uh, dancing and whatever the art is, it takes us to more creative places in our brain. And then we get other physiological functioning going on that helps to put us into a much more relaxed arena. And if we're doing art around the topic that was creating us the stress in the first place, we begin to pair some of the more restful parts of the brain with the stress reaction. Art, in whatever form, can help to start the healing process. Many veterans lock up their thoughts by trying to suppress bad memories, which can, in other ways, trigger emotions that are not socially acceptable. By using art as an outlet, they can unlock their thoughts, release them, and move on. Bill McDonald is an award-winning poet, author, lecturer, and film consultant for Vietnam War documentaries. Rather than relieve stress using drugs or alcohol, he relied on the pen. Lonely as a reservoir of bad times and people. I've cried sometimes watching the dawn break across future graveyards. It's funny how thoughts seem so loud, pounding away at our insides with memories beyond obituary dreams and suicide smiles. I look around me at all the young faces with thousand-year-old eyes reflecting only mute sadness of the morning light. And we stand there waiting for battles about to begin, not knowing or being aware or being able to taste tomorrow's joys. Finding your creative energies and using them to express their feelings can connect them with other individuals who have had similar experiences, enhance their life, and improve their spirit. 
So the arts are so important in giving the person uh, focused, meaningful, enjoyable activity that keeps their mind engaged in the present and gives them a sense of, of purpose and, and fulfillment and it allows expression of feelings that maybe they can't articulate verbally all the time. Music therapy and art therapy had some of their earliest beginnings in VA medical centers, um, largely because it was noted early on following World War I that um, those people who were engaged in using the arts as part of their healing healed faster, were able to leave the, the hospital sooner, were requesting less pain medication, were um, simply showing an improved functioning following their engagement with the arts. The fields in both areas uh, developed as a result of that. Roger Osborne returned from Vietnam to a life of unemployment with trouble reconnecting with society. He has been playing the fiddle on a regular basis since 1974 and now has his own band. He credits music with saving his life. When I saw Billy Spears, it was like, good Lord, I sent a message and I was supposed to get it, you know, here's your, here's your chance, here's your medicine. You realize that it, it's not for the buzz or the drunk or anything. I guess it is for the buzz, but it's the buzz of music. And it's that feeling you get when I see people having fun. It's like, there's my war. When I start working on a picture, the whole rest of the world just goes away. It doesn't exist. Alan Gandy creates images on his computer by combining existing photos and manipulates them with digital photo software called Photoshop. In this, uh, in the video that we're about to see, I took uh, a lot of images that I had collected or taken from my time in Vietnam, from uh, my transition from Vietnam back to a civilian life, uh, from magazines, from a ver variety of sources. But it started with that bunch of shoe boxes full of images that I had in the basement. Our patrols led us along trails that followed the rivers and through areas of thick vegetation where a Viet Cong sniper ambushed us. February 1968, the Tet Offensive had just started. Large amounts of supplies being moved down the Ho Chi Minh Trail. During the day, they were hidden in the tunnels and convoyed to the south under the cover of darkness. Within minutes, we had air cover, helicopter gunships, flying rockets and machine guns. The process of writing poetry, the process of writing a story, even the process of doing art, because I know people that, that, that paint their, their hurts, it takes it from the heart, it takes it from the mind, and it puts it on a canvas, or it puts it on a computer screen, or it puts it in a book. But what it does, it takes it from the spirit. It lightens the load. It's an amazing process. I don't have to be a great artist. I don't consider what I do artwork. It's computer graphics. But it is a way to express 
whether a veteran has been dealing with PTSD since World War II or recently diagnosed, there are places a veteran can go for assistance. There are veterans out there right now that are watching this, listening to my words, uh, watching this film, um, that have sat back for 35 years and haven't really taken any action. Ambiguity is, is a big part of why the guys coming back from Iraq are so prominent with PTSD. They uh, need to be encouraged to, whether it's private or through the VA, they need to get involved with these activities because they do help. A service organization, Disabled American Veterans, known as DAV, is a nonprofit, non governmental entity made up of veterans to assist veterans, as well as their widows and orphans. Uh, probably one of the biggest problems when they come to see us is if they cannot establish that they're a combat veteran, is trying to verify an in service stressor. So we work with them uh, by looking at service medical records or going to get different types of evidence to verify or to meet the element that there was a verifiable stressor and therefore the VA rating board can grant service connection. If there was a, a person with post-traumatic stress disorder who has not been receiving help, I would say to them, there are people who care, there are people who are trained in dealing with PTSD, I would tell that individual that they need to keep in mind that uh, nat all National Service officers are disabled veterans. Most of us are combat veterans. So we're here to help. We've been through the same things that they're feeling, and we are their advocate. We're not the enemy, and so they should come and see us. And it's my hope that others will take up the pin or take up the paintbrush, or take up the guitar, or take up the piece of sculpture, whatever their talents may be. It's not the final product that's important. It's the process of creating that product. Whether you can write poetry that anybody else understands is not important. What is important is you poured your heart into it. Veterans have many avenues for sharing their art be it the National Veterans Creative Arts Festival, where they can perform dance, drama, music, as well as arts, crafts, painting, and pottery. There is an opportunity for them to enter a competition or share their writings around the world on the web or contributing locally in their community. The possibilities are endless. I would invite any, any veteran, PTSD or whatever, to please Contact your um, VA medical centers, talk to a music therapist, talk to a recreation therapist, talk to any of your art therapists, and um, let, us, let us help you uncover that piece that, that um, may be in there that you've never discovered or may be a really crucial part of taking you to the next step of your healing. And once that trust is there, it's leaps and bounds after that, leaps and bounds. You don't even know how well you're getting but you are, you are. I think that's the main message here, besides getting in, the, getting help. Uh, trust your doctors. And, and think about enjoyment. Think about what you enjoy. It's submerged in it. It's submerged in it. Everything else will come around. I do believe that. You don't have to wait 30 years like most of the Vietnam vets did. They didn't know what PTSD was even when we came back. You know, it was Vietnam vets were having a lot of trouble adjusting to society. So they started looking into it. Wow, there's a thing, there's a commonality here and it was called post-traumatic stress. Whatever age you are, it's never too late to improve relationship with yourself. And that will in turn improve your relationship with your family, your children, your wife, your neighbors, are you going to be a happier person?